You always like a, uh, isn't it kind of like a drama about figure skating? Oh, yes, yes it is. Oh, right. one second. Uh, guys, I may have forgotten to turn the bake button on for the cookies. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I wish I record. Oh, we did record that. that that's, that's going to be the episode. Hello, okay. everyone, and welcome to episode six of Sketch Watch Play. Uh, I am John Flurry. I'm Christopher Wade. And we have our, uh, I'm happy to say, we have our first ever guest host. Feel free to introduce yourself. Oh my gosh, I feel so important. Wow. You uh, are. Hey, I'm Patrick Flurry. I'm, hey, I'm Patrick. John's brother. Hey, Chris. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my little brother. Never mind the hack, for the, never mind the fact that he's a full head taller than me. Yeah, we'll, hold, we'll not hold that against you. No. Um, Patrick has been one of, I think, several friends and family, me and Chris have, who we, that we've considered for occasional guest roles on, on the show. He mm-hmm. was even one of the original candidates for when I was looking for someone to do as a, as a uh, co-host. Oh, cool. He is, I think it's safe to say that maybe not to the same level as me and Chris, but you definitely fall into the realm of geekdom to some degree. You know, I, I have my I have my things. I, I definitely, when we were younger, uh, spent... I was probably like that sibling who spends a lot of time watching his brother play video games a lot. Mm-hmm. Like I would always just like kind of park on the couch. And mm-hmm. if I remember correctly, it, we were more of like a you were the console kid and I was like the handheld kid. So the Game Boy kid. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Oh, yeah. You know, it was like the baby brother has the baby system. I think that's oh kind of how it worked. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think that's going to tie into our main topic in a little while. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so there is one thing we, we uh, did want to talk about before main thing, but qu- first, quick uh, all around, how was everybody's holiday? Holiday was good. It was nice and chill. My wife made me a picture uh, of two of my characters from this film that I'm working on. Sweet. And, wonderful. Oh, yay, thank you. Um, <laughs> and uh, let's see. We start, uh, And she got me a, a book on uh, storytelling. It's called, ironically, so it's just called Story. It's by Robert McKee. Really uh, good title. Very. The title tells you everything. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah. Our family uh, Christmas went well. Uh, I think you probably saw on on my Facebook post the big thing that my parents surprised me with was a parrot. Yeah, I saw that. This parrot is dope. He's cute. It's a uh, Quaker parrot. Uh, look them up. They're, I think they're all, almost all like, blue or green. This one's green. Uh, I named him Squawks after mm. Donkey Kong's Donkey parrot Kong. companion. Awesome. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, Patrick was I've definitely proved to that. Uh-huh. I, I believe when I heard about it, the first thing I said is I, I looked over to my girlfriend and I said, you know, within a day, we're going to have a response from John and it's going to be named after some game. video game character from our childhood. Yes. And I believe the first name that you came with us was Kazooie. Yes. Yeah, that was the first thing that came to mind. But then I went, one, that's a little too long. Mm-hmm. And two, I feel like that's not a perfect fit for this kind of bird. What 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 what, what, what sums him up? And he, let me tell you, parrot squawk. <laughs> They do. He's uh, chilling in my place right now, but he still uh, is not above speaking his mind sometimes, even mm-hmm. completely at random. He is a strong, independent parrot, it seems. Absolutely. <laughs> he is a very social justice warrior parrot. You know? and, in, and in this day <laughs> and age, that's what, you, that's what you gotta be if you're gonna be a parrot. I'm imagining like, him picketing with like a little sign. He actually does... <laughs> uh, I think, Patrick, you saw... He, very interestingly, he when he eats, he scoops something up in his claw and uses like a hand... Oh. It's like nibble on. It's very yeah. Smeagol from uh, Lord of the Rings. It's like you got to watch. Like, oh, that's a, that's the worst analogy. You got to watch your back. Then I was about to say that's yeah, very yeah, disgusting. Yeah, yeah. It's very. It's a lot cuter than that. <laughs> it brings to mind those that trend I saw a while back of people photoshopping arms onto birds instead of yeah. wings. That is absolutely not something I've ever heard of. It's and hilarious. It sounds terrifying. No, it's hilarious. Oh. I think there's one like of a beefy bird arm playing guitar and stuff. Look it up sometime. <laughs> yeah, you're um, gonna wake up and Squawks is just gonna be like bench pressing over in a corner. <laughs> With his wings, which is even more impressive. And Patrick, you uh, were you didn't join the family for no, Christmas Day. I, but... I it's it, I felt terrible. It was I I was actually my girlfriend and I have been seeing each other long enough now that we're doing that thing where we're splitting holidays. Yeah. In between okay. the families, so I was in Connecticut for Christmas Day, but I got here two days after. Cool. Um, not a huge loss for me though, because her Italian grandparents were in town, and her nonna makes a crazy lasagna. It was amazing. Ooh. Yeah. Last thing I'll say before we move on is, uh, 
me and Patrick got each other some pretty cool stuff. Mm-hmm. He got me a uh, three month subscription to Gaming Loot Crate. Oh, here, oh, let cool. me drop an ad for them in here now, like the ads we talked about. Yeah. Gaming Loot Crate. It's Loot Crate, <laughs> but games. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was a pretty cool first month that I I got it before Christmas, which I think you were a little bummed about. Yeah, it but came early. Got some cool stuff. Pain in the butt. Awesome. I got the highlights were a uh, Mass Effect shirt and a replica of Ratchet's Ranch from Ratchet and Clank. And oh, that's so which, cool. Uh, my gift to Patrick, it didn't really break tradition for me. I often get him movies or games, mm-hmm. but since he finally got a PS4, and I know two games he had been meaning to get around Black Friday, uh, I got him Borderlands: The Handsome Collection. And uh, oh, the PS4 Ratchet and Clank from earlier this year. That is that is so beautiful. Oh my god, it really that is, is. That is a beautiful really Christmas. Is. It's a wonderful holiday. Yeah, and I even found out a little more about uh, his girlfriend Bianca. She is. I don't think she qualifies as a geek on our level. No, unfortunately, but she does have a fondness for our main topic later. Mm-hmm. And I found out recently she grew up with uh, Jack and Daxter and Sly Cooper. Yep. Nice. In fact, while I was over nice. with her, her brothers in Connecticut, they dug out the PS2 and uh, on Christmas Eve night played Jack and Daxter until three in the morning. The first one? Oh, first one. Yeah. Oh, that, and I'm, that's... I'm looking forward to hearing her thoughts on Ratchet. It's a series she always meant to try out, but never got around to. That sounds really adorable. In fact, I think uh, me and Serena need to do something like that uh, <laughs> for during the new year or something. What, like play, playing the older games? Yeah, because she loves Jack and Daxter, too. Yeah. So that that'll be a great opportunity for us just to go back for like a good eight hours and just play <laughs> through them and Listen to the Daxter. PS3 remasters. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. All right. We're gonna go into. Well, we're gonna yeah, I think mental we're gonna, note. We're gonna, fall, we're gonna fall into segue territory here. So maybe we'll come back to Jack and Daxter. Oh great. One. So you mentioned the segue. Um, so I'll do a quick ad for them. Uh, segways, <laughs> bikes that aren't. <laughs> <laughs> Don't use your feet, you animal. <laughs> We're less than 10 minutes into this episode, and you, I think you've already uh, staked out your niche on the show. Yeah, the It'll ad be guy. our official, unofficial ad guy. Um, <laughs> but to segue into our mini discussion for what we've been uh, watching lately, I can't quite comment on this, but Chris and Patrick, you have both seen Rogue One. Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah, got- I, which, who, which of you would like to go first on Chris, start General. us off, man. Okay, Chris. Yeah, I'm I'm actually not a big fan of Star Wars movies. I grew up at a time when everything was parodying and uh, parodying them. Yeah, yeah, same. So every time someone says, Luke, I am your father, I was like, that's James Earl Jones being the robot black guy from Star Wars. <laughs> and every time uh, like someone would quote or make a joke with it, Spaceballs or Fairly Odd Parents, yep, I, didn't really feel, I, I really didn't feel the need to go out and watch Star Wars until relatively recently when the new movie started coming out. Mm-hmm. And now that I've actually, you know, sat down with Force Awakens, I actually I actually get it. I actually get what people loved about the original series when it came out. I mean, granted, I watched them uh, when I was younger, and I didn't really feel much of anything except these. That's that's Mark Hamill not playing the Joker. <laughs> and I, I, I felt a certain way about it. I didn't feel I didn't feel the vibes up until now. And Force Awakens was uh, was pretty cool. Yes, and was. I gotta say, I really liked Rogue One. I actually like it more than I did Force Awakens. It was it was really really good, uh, really really good. And by the third act, uh, there's a point in one of my favorite filmmaking devices uh, when you're trying to cap a story is when you're playing hot potato with the MacGuffin when you're trying to like get that one thing to finish off the movie and like I have to I have to put the key in the hole now the bad guy has it <laughs> I, I love if it's done well I love that kind of storytelling I immediately thought of Dark Knight Rises uh-huh. <laughs> yeah the, the that, 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 sure. that version that, might be like an excessive version of that <laughs> yes yes uh, when it's done well it def- yeah. it definitely sends shivers up my spine and by the time Act Three came around for Rogue One, those shivers came a coming, and I, I felt really good about it. The Rogue One was a definite surprise, mm-hmm. and I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was. I had a very good time. Ch- I had a really good time. I'm hearing a, almost every review I've read or listened to of it, regardless of, of a person's each person's individual opinions of the film as a whole, they almost all agree the last act is fantastic. Like yeah. it's worth uh, going through whatever issues you might have before that for how it wraps up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I so uh, I come from kind of a different place. Uh, John and I, when we were younger, when we were very young, actually, I guess the. The original trilogy was like re-released in theaters, the special editions. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And right after, we saw all those in theaters, but then right after that... I only saw New Hope in theaters. Then we got them on VHS. Okay, well, maybe I'm lying then. Um, you might have seen them with friends, I don't I know. think I saw them all in theaters, but then our, our Uncle Pete, uh, one time at like a Walmart stop, got like uh, the trilogy tape box set, and they lived right down the road from us. Yeah. And I think as a result of that, we ended up watching those movies 10,000 well, times. no, wow. we got the uh, VHS box set for Christmas. Well... But we might have seen the Pete's before that. I think I know, it was before then. I think, I, yeah. I think Chris and Brian had them, too. Okay. Well, there you go. And mm-hmm. so I have, like, a crazy love for these movies. Awesome. Um, and I, like, that's even, like, seeing all the flaws in them, I totally get it. But I think I'm, like, such a nostalgic lover of these movies that it's, like, mm-hmm. you know, I was I still, like, think back to, like, being a little kid trying to, like, force push the glass of milk on the yeah. dinner uh-huh. table. I, I have love to, lightsabers myself. Yeah, I, I have to admit that after seeing Rogue One, I was doing the, the extending of the arm and trying to like get things from across the. <laughs> Keep like I, you'll get it. Yeah, well, I actually did it at my job, um, <laughs> and uh, my coworker was sitting next to me, and I needed like I, I needed like a pen or something, and I just extended my hand out, and I I, I heard the noise and like the force noise in my head. That vibration. I like, yeah, I was like, I can do it if I just believe. And my coworker just stepped right into the way. Of my arm and the pen, looked at the pen, then looked at me, and back to the pen, then back at me, and was like, "Are you doing Star Wars?" He knew. Hey, and he actually, knew. This is a really good segue into our next ad. Um, Big pens. There, even if you don't have the force. Um, so that's for Bic. If we ever uh, have you back on, this needs to be a running gag. Yep. I actually thought you said something else for a split second. Something that rhymes with Bic. Yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> Which one are you guys thinking? Uh, are you thinking well, Dick? Yeah. Yes, I am. Uh, okay. No, not <laughs> Dick Pens. Um, but finish up your uh, Star Wars sound. So, uh, so <laughs> oh, where do you stand on the prequels, Patrick? Awful, hate them, don't okay. like them. Okay. Except <laughs> I still think the progress is cool. I, I, I'll just say right now, uh, Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones are mediocre to bad films, uh, and Revenge of the Sith has more good moments, but it's still really, really flawed. I'm a Trinidadian! I'm sorry. Um, I like so, uh, favorite of the prequels. I, uh, yeah, so I, I really don't like the prequels, and it was like a disappointing thing even when I first saw them. The hype for um, Phantom Mesh was the unreal. Hype was unreal. Can, it can live up to that. But it felt like, it felt like uh, a whole different set of movies. It didn't have the same vibe. It didn't have the same energy, and it just mm-hmm. felt like same it acting. felt like a CGI like explosion. It um, felt like yeah. a special effects demo reel. Yeah, it did. And then I think the... The, the biggest thing was like, you know, when episode seven came out, I was just like, oh, this this looks like a Star Wars movie. Like, yes, we have a lot of great effects. Yes, they have a bigger budget than they've ever had. But but this looks like a Star Wars movie. It, and it, it feels like it one. Looked, it definitely looked and felt like a Star Wars movie. And I know there are a lot of people who feel like that. Um, the Force Awakens was a giant nostalgia trip back into the first few movies, and just felt that it was just J.J. Abrams was just doing a rehash. I don't and know the, certain elements were, but not as a whole. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'd, I'd say so. And for me, as someone who's a newcomer to the series, mm-hmm. uh, or uh, who are, believes he is a newcomer, and like I said, I've, I've seen the movies before, but as a new fan of the series, I definitely appreciate those callbacks. But I also appreciate the fact that. At the first frame of this movie, at the first, at the very first second of Rogue One, it doesn't start off traditionally like any other Star Wars did. There's no crawl, it's, right? Oh, there's no crawl, and our theater went crazy when there wasn't yeah. one. Like what? What? I I was already weirded out with Force Awakens because I now I know we're never going to hear the Fox uh, fanfare behind the Lucasfilm thing. Oh yeah, that's a little odd. It's such a giant jump, but that making such small choices really really have big emotional payoffs when they're when they're done in a way with the uh, with the thought that people are used to these movies starting and beginning and playing out a certain way mm-hmm. and while there are some elements in Rogue One that I felt were a little predictable there are some very minor changes that they played with the Star Wars formula which also made it very fresh mm-hmm. and just changing just switching up from the scroll is definitely among them and, and you know, it definitely made me jump from my chair a bit. Right, and I and so I guess I, I've talked a lot about the other stuff, but I haven't actually talked about Rogue One at all. It is like actually like mildly refreshing to get a movie in like the Star Wars universe where I know going into it, I'm like, I'm gonna get the whole story right yeah. now. 
it's yeah. like it's like this isn't the first of something this isn't yeah. like the end of something this is just it's its own thing where i'm going to sit down and i'm going to get my it's like really aptly named it's like a star wars story yeah i get the whole thing and they do a remarkable job of making me care about a yep. ton of characters that i've never yep. met before and they also give me all like the the fanboy love I need too by by throwing it to past things from the series, while also I think making it super accessible for new people. Um, it, it, absolutely, and it, it it definitely has. I don't really notice this from a lot of Star Wars film, and maybe um and maybe I've missed it uh, in regards to the the original trilogy and the prequels, um and even the Clone Wars series when they were head by Gendi Tarkovsky. Yeah. But, but when The Force Awakens and Rogue One uh, appeared and I watched them and absorbed everything, I noticed there is a discernible amount of snark <laughs> in, in the oh, dialogue. Yeah. And it's very, it definitely puts you in, in the mindset that not only is the movie addressing you as a new generation, but it's also addressing the characters as a new generation. Oh, well, I, I think snark is a trademark of Star Wars. If we're speaking of what of the, the like the original trilogy, yeah. Every time like uh, uh, Han or Leia was around, R.I.P. Carrie Fisher, by the way. Uh-huh. Anytime time either of those characters, especially both of them, were on screen, they were very uh, quippy, and that's one. That's <laughs> a big thing. Um, the prequel trilogy was missing is good humor in that way, like yeah. for like really basic kid style, like you know Jar Jar. Uh, and then yeah. Force Awakens seems to have gotten that back, and I guess Rogue One does as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I guess the the kind of just like the last thing I'll I'll say on just how much I like this movie is that there is I guess we're not doing spoilers right just your impressions of something without giving it away okay I will just say that they do the greatest Star Wars fan service of all time which is just that I think any Star Wars like fanboys like one of their greatest angers is how the hell could they build the Death Star with this stupid problem in it really obvious problem this really obvious duct that like yeah just yeah. this thing and this whole thing explodes and we've sat here for for you know 40 30 you know 35 years now being like oh my god this is so dumb and they really quickly really simply in this movie just say oh yeah that was on purpose here's why it's here it's a great story point you're welcome fans and yeah. like, oh yeah thank god they did they did a great job at retconning that and, and oh yeah the it, crowd it was- in my theater I, I was lucky enough to go to like a midnight showing first night, and the crowd in my theater went insane when that <laughs> came out. And one dude behind us in the back of the theater just went, "Thank God, finally!" <laughs> and it's uh, when you when you really think about it, it's one of those decisions where you feel like, man, uh, it's just a small hole in the story that kind of breaks the entire, uh, <laughs> no. that kind of breaks believability for Star Wars. But when you think about it. And you know, I'm not going to get into any spoils, uh, spoilers, but it is addressed in Rogue One, and I'm glad that they did. And it's mm-hmm. it's tossed away so simply, and it's it's given to the audience in such a matter of fact and easy, and easily digestible way. Yeah. You kind of think of uh, when it, it it's done so in a way where the audience will kind of think, "Thank you," like you said, Patrick. And at the same time, it'll make you go, "Well, yeah, that's that makes sense." It's, yeah. it's not it's not done as a cop out. Yeah, and Chris, uh, to be honest, as you're listening to both of you guys discuss this movie, I actually feel a lot more inclined to go out and see it. Um, Were you not? No, I, I was, but actually, the internet has kind of been a lot pretty down on the movie, at least in the circles I go to. Oh, and I feel like it was rubbing off on me. I was a little nervous to see it, but I got I got to make my judge my own opinion. In this that's you, you, know. you really do. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, there, there are I, issues, but it's yeah, it's there's worth issues, it. and I and I I actually do have a few issues with the movie myself. But at mm-hmm. the same time, they're not issues that that take away from the enjoyment of the film. Yeah, almost every movie I love, you could, I could say the same and thing. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like I, I have, I have a bunch of things I could say. There's some real slow moments in that second act of that movie. That's what I'm hearing. But, but I gotta tell. I mean, like you said at the beginning, like, oh my god, the third act just is awesome. Yeah. Would you, and would you say that it's a one of the darker films in Star Wars? Well, I mean, all we can say is that, like, without, I don't think this is a spoiler to say, like, in the new in New Hope. The only the, this entire story was inspired by one line from a character who was like, uh, this is a misquote I'm sure, and nerds online, please feel free to yell at me. But um, the, this one woman, leader of the council, is like, many people gave their oh, lives. Many to bring this died. That's in Jedi. All right. Okay. Well, then I'm wrong. But but, um, but, you, but it's, it's, it's that same line. That's like you know, many people died to give us information, bring us information. It's kind of about that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've, I've been seeing reviews saying, like, this might be, that'd be the best movie to take, like, little kids to. Like, it gets pretty intense. And They'll be period. sad. 
Yeah. Well, um, all right. Well, that, I think that sounds like a – and like I was saying, uh, if, if I see it by our next episode, Chris, which I likely will, I think maybe we could do like a mini spoiler cast. Cause yeah, that would be fine. I'd love to discuss my thoughts and we can also – you can get people more open about uh, the things you want to talk about with the film. Absolutely. Oh, and just to close it up, I think anything that gives – uh, Star Wars Battlefront new maps is a wonderful thing. Um, <laughs> Patrick's, Patrick's been big into the game since he got his PS4. He was interested for a while. Oh, yeah. It's a good game, so I don't blame him. But I think that would be a good point for us to segue into our main review. But first, let me save this. And while you save, I'm going to take three seconds to pee. I recorded that. I'm going to take a second to grab a cookie because they smell delicious. I will be right back, John. I'm so glad I caught that baking line from you. <laughs> Since Patrick was our first guest, I let him pick our main topic for review. Uh, he offered a lot of good ideas, some of which we may revisit, with or without you. Ouch. <laughs> well, I think we'll try and save some for you. I'm <laughs> kidding. But there was one that, when I presented to Chris, I think we both thought had a lot of potential. And is pretty, uh, I think it's pretty topical, especially this year. Oh, yeah. We're discussing, you might have heard of it, it is kind of a semi-successful franchise called uh, Pokemon. Digimon! Oh. Digimon, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And uh, does anybody remember Pokemon, the thing that ripped up, ripped up Digimon? Like, whatever happened to that? I don't remember. Okay, no, we're, we're talking Pokemon people, and, you know, normally I'd like, to, I, I'd like to do a little overview of what we're talking about, but in this case, I feel like if you are listening to this show, even if you've never been interested in it, you kind of get the general gist of what Pokemon well, is Well, if you need an about. overview, I have this quick ad I can read for Pokemon uh, that they just sent in to me here. Um, Pokemon. Enslave small animals and even smaller balls. Pokemon. Oh my god. Cockfighting. Cockfighting on your Game Boy. <laughs> Pokemon. I remember seeing a uh, joke, like, for a Pokemon Message Wars topic. Michael Vick sent out, ha- out Houndoom. <laughs> oh, oh no. Yeah, yeah. But um, we're not talking about Michael Vick. But uh, Pokemon is... This has become such a prevalent part of game culture, geek culture, and at this point, it's a cross-generational thing. Uh, it celebrated its 20th anniversary, at least in Japan, uh, this past year, and it is – not only is it still going strong, but uh, thanks to a little app called Pokemon Go, I feel like this has been its strongest uh, prevalence in pop culture since its original launch. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely so, right. Yeah, so – I'm gonna go, I think we should go around the table what we first remember hearing about and experiencing Pokemon. Because mm-hmm. um, it started in Japan in, 90, in 96 and didn't get localized here until 98. And I remember first hearing about it when uh, there was a certain notorious incident with the anime in Japan uh-huh. that even stuff like The Simpsons referenced later on. If anybody's familiar with Porygon, the reason he never appeared in the anime is because he got an episode which had was kind of like a Tron-type thing of the characters being digitized. Well, I mean, how bad could it be? How bad could this episode be? It's not like it hurt a bunch of children. It gave hundreds of children seizures. Oh. Pikachu did a thunderbolt that caught the entire screen to flash red and blue, and a bunch of kids got hospitalized. Chris, do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. That was that was something. <laughs> I remember it was. I, I think I first heard about it when I was watching something on ABC, and it, was, it was, did like coming up on the news. It showed a bump. It showed a clip from uh, "Hey You Pikachu," and it, it was so misinformed. I realized because it went, "Why is this video game making children sick?" Okay, so I know I'm the guy who said, let's do Pokemon. I know a lot about Pokemon, but remind me what Hey You Pikachu is. It was an NC4 game where you had, it came with a microphone. Thank you. Didn't work very well. Uh huh. We'll get to the spinoffs later. So I'll just finish by saying um, Nintendo Power, I don't know if you ever read it, Chris. Yeah. Uh, me and Patrick, I had a subscription for a while. They did start hyping up, I think even a year before it officially came over, because in Japan it is, or at least was, called Pocket Monsters. Pokemon's a shortening of that. And they did a article talking about uh, the big facets of it, mainly the games, the anime, and the cards, and what a big deal it was in Japan, and how they were hoping to bring it to the U.S. soon. And then later I got a VHS tape. Nintendo Power used to do promotional VHS tapes, like for Diddy Kong Racing and Rayman. You mm-hmm. remember those? I mean, it was a big promo for Pokemon to like basically spell it all out for you. Like, yeah, it's going to be a lot of things and it's going to be a big deal. And okay, so I'm, 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 I've dominated this conversation. Patrick, what was your, do you remember about your first proper encounter with Pokemon? Well, I, I just want to say really quick that uh, 
uh, the viewers at home don't get to see this, but we're on Skype right now, and and Chris just moved his camera just so that we could see the Pikachu on top of his bookshelf, and then and then he just moved it right back. I missed that. I, I was so busy. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah, it was a slick move. But now now we know he's really game for it. Um, <laughs> I feel like I first heard of Pokemon. Actually, not I, I. I can't say I remember well enough. I feel like it was the same way as I experienced most things uh, as a kid, which was John uh, yeah. told me I had to get it, uh, which well, was that he got red and he needed someone to get blue. I want to say the anime started first. I'm just gonna say it how I remember. Oh okay, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, I, John got red and I got blue, and uh, he quickly decided that he was gonna pick Bulbasaur and he needed me to pick something else. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, just for trading's sake. And I remember uh, getting the game just because he told me to, but quickly it becoming, like, my entire life for yeah. for many, <laughs> more yeah. years than I think it happened to most people. For <laughs> for those who didn't grow up in the midst, of, like, I'm sure we have many professors who were around when during Pokemon's original launch, but if you weren't entrenched in it, f- I think for a good two to three years, this was a phenomenon like no other for me and Patrick. I think... In in my young life, ninety five percent of my money went to Pokemon related things, wow. mostly the cards. I'd say maybe for me a half or a third because I had a lot of other games and stuff to buy. Not Patrick, me. Patrick, yeah, you were the perfect age. That was when you first started getting allowance and stuff. Yep. I think. But I, I, so I threw myself head first into the Game Boy games, and that that was that was really the first thing I remember. And we watched the anime like crazy for oh, yeah. a very long time. But I think, I think for me, yeah, it was Pokemon Blue. Yeah, mm-hmm. and Chris. So uh, my introduction to anime was indeed the anime. Uh, well, my, I'm sorry. My, <laughs> my introduction to anime was the anime. Uh-huh. Yes, it was. Um, my, introduction, introduction. my introduction to water was the first time I drank water. Yeah. So we have that in common. <laughs> uh, my introduction to Pokemon was the cartoon. The cartoon uh, came on uh, UPN 20 yes. down here in D.C. Yes. And I'm just watching UPN 20 because I'm hoping that there will be a, another season of Gargoyles. And UPN 20 never got it to me. Mm-hmm. So I have to watch this crappy cartoon about some kid who has to take his electric squirrel and go on adventures with him. And Catch oh my all. god, it's awesome. And really quick, I just want to say, UPN just I don't know, sent me a message. Uh, UPN, we're not on anymore. Um, so that was the message from <laughs> That's UPN. That's very misguided marketing on their move. Yeah, well, I don't well, know what they're, they're spending their money on. No wonder they're not doing well, so well. Well now, they're called the, well, now they're called the Washington Chris Wade. So I'm actually okay with that. <laughs> I thought that was WB. <laughs> nope, it's CW now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry. Um, go back. I'll stop interrupting with commercials. Well, well. Uh, the thing about Pokemon with uh, starting out with uh, with its premise is just some schmuck kid running around a forest and and his friend <laughs> um, his friend who's trying to get her bicycle back and some guy who just has a rock snake and doesn't really bring it out during every episode. Oh God. <laughs> it's really awesome. I love that show. I don't. I, I know that show has been on for far too long. It's and the Simpsons time, of kids anime. Yeah. Yeah. By the time Pokemon came out, I was already like 14 or 15. I should not be watching a show that's built outside <laughs> of my target demographic. Uh, and I, at the time, I was like, I really should be looking into girls. I really should be looking. <laughs> um, but instead, I have bought both versions of Pokemon. I have bought two Game Boys because I was a lonely little Ooh. I was a lonely little jerk. And I just had two, I just had two Game Boys. You should be weren't interested. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, well, no, everyone in everyone in my school were they were either too cool for Pokemon or, or trying to be too cool for Pokemon or yeah. um, they were just um, not interested. And I mean, I was, like I said, I was a teenager. And by that point, I was already in high school and everybody else uh, was already going on with their lives and and trying to hide the fact that there was this new cartoon coming on that you can actually play on uh, that actually had a spinoff. Of, well, not spinoff, but actually had a tie in with the game itself. Yeah. So I love the show about as much, if not more, than the game. And I say that because I am uh, I like to consider myself as an animator and a writer and, and, and a guy who just loves, who just loves entertaining storytelling. Mm-hmm. And even though the Pokemon series has gotten a bad rap for basically doing the same old thing over and over again, kind of like the games, um, <laughs> but I... I still love the franchise as a whole. Like the the idea of going on a gigantic adventure uh, away from your parents and going about the world, finding new friends and who happen to be animals, and they get to like fight to the near death, but the only faint. for 
<laughs> but yeah, they just faint. And you get and you get to command them to produce special powers that explode upon impact. They are bears that shoot lasers out of their mouth. <laughs> it is amazing. That is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that show was my life for, uh, like you guys said, for for a good long period of time. And as someone who loved cartoons at that point and who was who was actively waiting on the non-existent next season of Gargoyles, Pokemon <laughs> was the thing that saved my life at that point. Pokemon, it was the next Gargoyles. Yep. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> for, let's clarify. Uh, I do not want Chris being falsely attributed for that amazing quote. <laughs> but um, no, I actually remember um, – I can't remember if you stopped watching Pokemon at the same time. I remember I bowed out around uh, Johto because I think that was getting that sense of repetition. Mm-hmm. I All I remember is is at a certain point, I, I made it through like all of Orange Island. Yeah, we both did. And I was like, I was like, okay, I am either feeling like I'm getting a little too old for this. And it's really not too old for this because I could watch that. St- I could watch those beginning episodes now and still yeah. feel wonderful. Yeah. Um, but I think it was, I think the repetition of the series was starting to get to me. Yeah. And at mm-hmm. a certain point I was like, you know, it, it, it doesn't bother me with the games. You know, I've played, I, I have gotten every single generation, uh, generation of this game ever since they started. And up mm-hmm. until now, and it's the, the repetition has never gotten to me, but with the show, Eventually, I was like, I feel like I've seen this before. Yeah. yeah. And we actually, I remember a couple years later, just on a whim, we watched an episode of uh, the Ruby and Sapphire season. Uh-huh. Where they, I think it was, uh, it was an old man going for the catfish Pokemon. Oh, yeah. I, I think we were like, yeah, it's still pretty good, but it hasn't changed. Yeah, it's the kind of thing where it's like, it's not like it got bad. It just you knew was it the same. Though, mm-hmm. Chris, you were telling me, because um, you watched some of the more recent uh, seasons, that... Yeah. I, not only do I think seasons have a little more of an overall story arc now sometimes, yeah. but you said they can actually get pretty epic. Like You said this, the finale to the XYZ uh, season was almost as like big feeling as one of the movies. Yeah, it definitely really felt that way. Um, yeah. I'm sort of like you guys, where by the time Johto and the advanced series started to come around, I, I did kind of fall. I did kind of fall. Um, I did kind of just drop off the series, uh, even though I still had a, a great admiration for it. And I made sure that whenever there was an episode that seemed to have like kick-ass animation, then I would just go in for that one episode and then uh, mm-hmm. and, and then hybrid. And the animation's um, gotten better if you look at the newer the, series. The, the, the animation's gotten way better in yeah. excellent. Uh, in More excellent budget, time. digital techniques, it helps. Yeah, uh, up to the point where uh, even the writing has gotten a little bit more confident. It's gotten confident to the point where uh, there's there are story arcs and there are places where even the side characters who just who at first glance they look like just one note characters but the more as the series go um, goes along they, they they do start to grow and they do and they do start to uh, produce more for the group as a whole yeah and um, even though yes Team Rocket is still there and they are my favorite characters and same no, same and Meowth is my favorite yeah. going back. Yeah. <laughs> Um, they're still there, but even they go through some pretty, uh, some, some, some very interesting arcs oh, inside I, of, uh, and I will say, well, on that subject, I think I, I, and I, I'm pretty sure I'm right saying this. I believe the first TV show episode that I ever watched in my life that made me cry <laughs> was the episode, uh, when we get Meowth's backstory, oh, where oh, we find like, that, yeah. there's, like there's like that Persian that he it's loves the ending. and he tries yeah. to like, he learns to talk to impress her and she ends up thinking like he's a freak yeah. and it's, oh my gosh. And I just like, as a little kid was devastated. Just like I that. I remember that. Crushed oh me. Mm-hmm. What'd she say? She never want to be with me because I'm still just a walking, talking, freak me out. <laughs> Maybe so. But at least he's our freak. <laughs> there was, um, and I just want to say, we'll get to the games in a bit, but I think we're still on top of the anime. There was another Meowth episode that got me emotional in the Orange Island arc. Chris, do you, know, do you remember the one where they th- they people think he's a deity? Oh, yeah. Uh- uh, I didn't see that one, actually. Oh, it's cute. It's called Meowth Rules. Basically, <laughs> he gets... The setup for Meowth Rules is that they get blasted off again. He lands on an island full of like weird p- tribal people who think uh, uh, talking Meowth is going to fall from the sky and leave them as a deity. So yeah. it works out for him. They're pampering him, and Jesse and James show up and realize, like, well, Meowth has it better than us. Has it better than us now. Let's leave him. And they do, like, a sacrificial thing because they're like, okay, now the Meowth will we'll have you fight and do payday and make us lots of money. And he says early in the episode, like, I got so busy learning to talk, I never learned payday. So he's getting yeah, the crap he, beat out of him. Yeah, and uh, I, Jesse and James throw James' bottle cap collection to fake it. 
And uh, when Meowth realizes what happens, he like runs off crying, trying to find them and apologize. It's a, it's a real sweet episode. Not I, devastating, actually, but emotional. You think you can ever forgive me? I suppose we have to forgive you. Otherwise, you'd never pay us back for all those coins and bottle caps we threw. <sighs> Thank you. Hey, let's go, pal. <laughs> My friends. Ha <laughs> ha! Never forget the things that really make you happy. <laughs> now that you describe it, I think I actually remember it because I think Meowth had said that I used up all of my experience learning how to talk. Yes. So, he's yeah. a so essentially he's at like level 100, but he's weak as shit. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, so, yeah, I think I do remember that episode. Yeah. Oh, I, honestly, I, when I thought you were going to say what made you sad, there, I've always feel like there were two episodes that really got to people. One is the Butterfree episode. Oh, the Butterfree, Butterfree episode made me saying goodbye cry. For, to go mate. And the one where Pikachu almost leaves. He doesn't, yeah. but man, it's sad. The Butterfree episode made me uh, made me tear up really fast. Yeah, no, I, does like, leave. I mean, and looking back on it now, I'm just like, man, he really did not need Butterfree. He just nope. let that man go. But, does he uh, need anybody besides yeah. Pikachu? Let's be real. Yeah. Well, let's, I mean, at the end of the day, Ash is, while a very fun character to watch, the fact that he's been doing this for, you know, 20 years now, and he is still just dumb as rocks, he, he, and ageless. He's, he's still at this point just like forgets what types are good against what types. Yeah. It's insane that he it's still not- thinks like every once in a while that he can it's use a- like flamethrower a- against like a star me and like that it's going to go well. It's a little aggravating, and I think uh, I haven't watched all the episodes of X and Y, but I think they do a little bit of a better job, like addressing that. Oh, like, I watched God. the uh, first episode or two of X and Y on Netflix. He's still not a genius, but he did seem a bit more competent by that point. And oh, but, oh I think we should move on to the games in a minute. But um, I remember Patrick, you did bring up you're aware of the uh, mass recast that took place in the show. Which 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 all the human characters got recast. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They they switched dubbing companies, and uh, I was it's. Ash is not as good, but tolerable. Jesse is like, in Team Rocket, is like almost the same. And then James and Meowth are terrible. Oh, yeah. yeah I, I think Jesse stayed. Um, no, I'm no, no. Sure. It's, it's someone different, but she's like perfect at replicating the old voice. Is she? Okay. All right. Wait, so Chris, I have a question. So I think you've actually maybe checked in further along than we have. Other than Team Rocket and Ash, and I guess Misty probably is, mm. is she still Misty's gone? No, Misty no, Rocker no, long no. gone. That, that pissed a lot of people yeah. off. Yeah, I'm I, upset. So is it just Ash and Team Rocket now that we still it's, know? It's just Ash, Team, Team Rocket. Rocket. Professor Oak makes a makes uh, makes a guest appearance every now Ash's and then. Mom. Ash's mom makes a special guest appearance every now and then. Um, there's always a new girl. There's always a new sidekick or the si- or the sidekick's uh, little brother or sister comes. Wow, I guess up Ash now. is more James Bondish than I ever expected. Yeah. yeah. And the kind of thing is, I think it became a tradition because Misty and Brock were both gym leaders in the in the games and anime, and mm-hmm. so since then they either do I think like the female companion is always the female player player character from the games. Yes. Like May was the girl replaced, replaced Misty. She was from uh, Ruby Sapphire. Then Dawn from Diamond and Pearl. Um, actually, I don't think the girl from uh, Black and White was. Yeah, the girl from uh, there wasn't a girl from Black and White. It was like. I'm not sure if she was like a trainer or a gym leader. Yeah, Iris. I, I know. In, I know in a sequel. Yeah, I know in a sequel she becomes gym leader, like gym leader champion. She becomes a she's a she's gym leader, and then she becomes a champion. Yeah, and then in uh, X and Y, Serena, the girl trainer, mm-hmm. and the males have typically been still a uh, a gym leader. You guys should yeah. have like a, a segment on this show that has like theme music. That's like da 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 da, da wife help. <laughs> and we just very get good about wife that. help from the corner of the room. He's not wrong. Yeah, I like yeah. that. But um, I think we should probably move on to the games also. Do it. Sure. But, uh, oh, and what, but I will say uh, one thing that bummed me out, not just about the voice recast, was looking up the old voice cast and finding that Meowth died. Oh. Did you not oh. know that, Chris? Oh, Chris no. is having... Oh. I'm so sorry. Just, just so I can narrate for the people at home. Chris 2016, having... why? No, 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 this was years ago. Chris is having a real oh, visceral yeah. reaction. Yeah, yeah. he looks like he just had a heart attack. Yeah. yeah. He's off. He's off mic now, just screaming. Poor guy. Chris is oh, weeping oh. in the corner of his room. It was a while ago, Chris. Uh, okay. 2016 did not take her. I'm good. That just caught me by all oh, the shock. I'm good. Yeah, look her up, Maddie Blostein. I'm think, sorry, bud. I think it was a. Uh, it was pneumonia or something. Kind of calm. It was a shame. Okay. People still die of pneumonia. I might be wrong. I think it might have been an infection. I just, you know, it's oh. okay. I just mixed up pneumonia I, and polio I, it was in my head. She didn't get so. <laughs> 
Okay, so okay, it wasn't polio. I feel fine now. Yeah. And okay, just so in case we don't have anybody asking, yeah, Meowth was voiced by the, by a female who was trans. She still oh. was able to retain a masculine voice. So okay. classic okay. stuff. All right, so talking about the games, um, quick around the table, what is your favorite uh, generation? Uh, you know, I'm actually – I. I thought about this earlier today, and I was like, I'm definitely going to say red and blue, but I'm actually going to say gold, silver. I think it was... That's up there I loved I loved the day and night aspect. I loved I loved the addition of... I, I feel like we'd sat with the original Pokemon long enough that I was actually ready for new ones, mm-hmm. and I really oh, I liked the Ho-Ho Lugia stuff, and, and to be honest, I thought the... I love that movie tie-in so much at the time yeah. that it, it made it particularly great for me. I've that I loved all of... the legendary bird Lugia stuff at that time. Lucia, I... Lugia, Lugia, yeah. Thank and you. me and Patrick yeah. have good memories of seeing all three of the original movies in theaters. Yeah, they were pretty oh, big oh, events. Uh, like uh, I make no apology that Pokemon 2000 is on my uh, like top 20. Uh, That's my favorite movies. one of the three. Say I what? think one is good, but a little overbearingly dark. Which mm-hmm. sorry, which which one is which? Which what are the three? First one is Mewtwo. Yes. Second one is Lugia and the Islands and the Birds. Yes. Third one is Entei and the Girl. And is that like with all the unknown? Yeah, and I actually like. I think that one's neat because it doesn't try to be as epic on a scale. It's more about a, a girl dealing story. with grief through denial. Basically, yeah. it's a little yeah. dark in that way. There's actually a really cool YouTube uh, video about it. It's been made by a guy called the Cartoon Gamer, and he he runs down like all on um, like uh, this on um, some of the story bits that were left out of Pokemon. Uh, the first movie, and um, even like some of the politics that went in, uh, that um, that went into creating Poke- um, the third Pokemon movie as well. So he, he goes through the first three. Yeah. And it's did pretty you think you've ever seen the uh, that short they did on the VH, like the VHS DVD about Mewtwo's birth? Yeah, I do remember that. Oh my god, that thing is that thing so. Uh, I was kind of shocked by it because it's like <laughs> it's his spirit with like clones of, of the scientist's daughter and Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirrel that all die. You yeah. find out like that the head scientist he kills at the beginning was, he was all into because he was trying to resurrect his dead daughter and his wife left him over and I'm like, this is Pokemon. This is I, was, I was already kind of impressed when I first saw Pokemon, the first movie in theaters, but just imagine just how just how really heavy that would have been for kids. I mean, yeah. I think, oh. I'm pretty sure they would have handled it. I mean, oh, it, I, it, had it, a, I had a real hard time with with clone Pikachu slapping regular Pikachu over <laughs> oh, and over oh, and over Jesus again. Christ. That is a meme now, though. Oh, my God. And it's a pretty funny meme. But it at is. the time, as like a little kid, I was like, I was devastated. It is sad that Pikachu's yeah. just letting it slap him until it just breaks down crying. Oh, yeah. First one's sad as hell. Yeah. Um, second one's more an epic journey. And third one's also somber, but not as sad. Um, the only one I ever saw afterwards, I think nowadays they mostly are on TV, uh, I saw the Lucario one a little while ago. Not not a big fan of it. Didn't see it. it you know, it's it's, uh, it's not really worth uh, your time unless you're a big big diehard. Other than the fact that I I got a kick out of finding out Lucario is voiced by Goku. <laughs> is he in in that and uh, not in Brawl but in Smash Four? Yeah, it is uh, Sean Schemmel. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, but getting back to the games. Um, so Gold Sewer was your probably might be your favorite. I think so. Chris, do you have a favorite generation? Uh, I think this one's my favorite generation. Sun and Moon. Uh, I mean, uh, great I, things. I think. Uh, I mean, does X and Y still count as this generation? No, I don't or, think so. I think we've moved past. No. Okay. Um, then I'd say I, I I'm going to have to say Sun and Moon. I I, I think it's a nice evolution. I think, it's, I think it's a nice progression. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, it's a nice progression from X and Y, which I already thought were pretty strong as they were. They Even the fundamentals, the, at least. Yeah, the, um, I think that they've made. I think that Nintendo. I, I mentioned this on the last podcast that I think Nintendo's made. Uh, Nintendo and Game Freak have done, made enough changes to the um, made changes to the Pokemon formula outside of the core battle system that keeps it nice and fresh. But I do think that going forward, they they definitely need to do something with the the turn based menu selection battle system. Well, uh, I'm still hearing a lot of complaints about that. Yeah, and but I will say, I mean, just gosh. It's like they're finally addressing like little tiny issues that we've had. Maybe HMs. For, for, Absolutely. Oh my gosh! Like the fact that HMs have finally become like a non-issue in these games. Yeah. The fact that you can just call in any Pokemon. You're like, oh my god! It, it was always devastating in the old games when you were like, well, I've got to teach, you know, one of my main guys Surf just because like yeah. I gotta have it or have a worthless one with you all the time or have like, yeah or have one worthless Pokemon in your party all the time and it's just like finally and it's also the thing of like. There's so many new Pokemon now that I have a hard time remembering oh, what everything's type is. Yeah. So I love the new feature in Sun and Moon that comes up that is as long as you've seen the Pokemon before, then yeah. you can see which of your moves will be effective, not oh, effective. Oh, they show that in battle? Or, I know that. or like normal. Yeah, it shows next to the move. And I'm the only one of us who hasn't played the game yet. 
I'm still yeah. trying to beat X and Y, and I'm waiting to see if that rumor of a port for the Switch is true. See, see, I've heard a couple complaints, but being 32 and with a job <laughs> and <laughs> trying to, and trying to do creative things of, of his own, I can't exactly remember how Rock beats this, um, how Rock beats Scissors in another sort of way. And I think that Nintendo find um, making an easy catch all that says this is what's weak to that. Use it. I think I, we're all aware of the cl- of the starter uh, weapon triangle, which is yeah. fire beats grass, grass beats water, water beats fire. And I remember a few that like the anime burns your memory, like uh, you know when you see a Pidgey fighting Caterpie and Misty's like birds eat bugs. Yeah, or, and uh, I know electric or, always beats fly. Yeah, but or, oh my god, if I if I have any idea what fairy or, is, or, I'm you know lying. The fight against Brock, uh, electric and flying don't do well against rock. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, why uh, we get sprinklers in the game. That's how Pikachu beat Onyx in the show. <laughs> that's cheating. Well, I still call yeah, that. That's true. Cheating. Yeah, no, no, Ash thought so too. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. In real life, Ash, Ash will probably have been like declined, like um, to be able to go be a trainer because he yeah. cheated, and now he's like some <laughs> banker or something. I thought, <laughs> have you guys seen? Um, I would love. I, sorry, I, I would love a spin-off Pokemon series that it's an alternate dimension, and it is just. It is just failed. Ash is just is just a banker in a Pokemon Center. And he's just dealing with the ins and outs of, of of successful new trainers coming in, and you just look at that sad, dead look in is his eyes. Is he like a middle aged balding Ash? Yeah. Oh yeah, and he's still wearing that hat, but it's I want to cover up same the bald voice. spot. And whenever he's got to do like a new set of reports for the, um, for the quarterlies, he just turns it backwards. He's like, I'm going to do this now. Time to stamp. So uh, uh, banker, what are you doing? Uh, Catch him! Are those reports <laughs> on my desk yet? <laughs> Pretty good. And I, I, I'm still not quite sure what my favorite generations were. I think nostalgia-wise, the first two, um, especially Gold and Silver, mm-hmm. that was seems like such a big leap with the breeding, mm-hmm. with uh, the Gideon Night Cycle, and the fact that you got to revisit all the old areas after beating the main game. That which was I, really cool. Well, I found out recently yeah. that was solely the work of uh, a Mr. Satoru Iwata. No. Oh, he really? started out he started out as a programming and was they almost didn't put it in because they couldn't figure out how to deal with the Game Boy's memory limitations. He cracked it. That's awesome. That's super cool. Yeah. Good for um him. past nostalgia. Uh, me and Patrick, I remember we were a bit disappointed by Ruby and Sapphire when they first came out. Yeah, it just felt not a substantial leap. Yeah. It felt it felt like uh more I, I know we say it's hard not to say this about all the Pokemon games, but it felt like more of the same. That one was most guilty, too. And that, I think, us. was maybe most guilty of that problem. And I was a little wary after that. But then um, Diamond and Pearl came out, and I really liked it. Uh, same with same with Black and White and X and Y. Uh, I guess I'd have to go back and replay Diamond and, and Black to see which one I liked more. Those were, were pretty similar. Mm-hmm. Uh, X and Y, I was really happy with the graphical revamp and the much better online system, that per- consistent, persistent system of trades and battles. Yeah. Um, and... It made Ruby and Sapphire better too. I got a uh, uh, Alpha Sapphire and I'm having a blast with it. And I like mm-hmm. they had more story to it too and more post game content. I've been really surprised just how just what good Pokemon I can get simply by wonder trading. Like yeah, by the oh, once amazing with X and Y, I trade like a Pidgey and I got a Gengar, one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, I felt bad mm-hmm. for the other guy, but whatever. Yeah, but by the, by the time the third or fourth day came around for Sun and Moon, I was already trading like the starters. And right. I got I got the full trio and, and, and like just sitting on my team. Yeah, and I am super happy. And I I will say that I got a shout out to like kind of the wonderful Pokemon community that exists all over the world because there's there's a Reddit page for Sun and Moon that is just for trading. And not only is it just for trading, but I so I had a a uh, Ghastly I really wanted to be a Gengar, and mm-hmm. I had oh, sorry Hunter I really oh god that's bad Hunter I wanted to be a Gengar and I had um, I guess the the Magmar Electabuzz uh, evolutions Kids. have to be no 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 there's third evolutions oh yeah in the that's game where they add those yeah, that are yeah. done by trading um, and I went on that Reddit to just see if I could find a way to to get this done and I saw that there's like tons of people just being like hey I really need a trade back just for evolution and within six seconds everybody always gets a response like yeah here's my friend code hop on we'll do it now oh you each and do I did evolution trade backs well the guy I mean I think most of the time it's for somebody who also needs the same thing but I went on and some guy just like traded me a Pidgey back and I traded it right back to him and it was like he did he just sat on got on and helped me like three trades in a row and I was like wow what an awesome yeah. community well, some people might just be in it for the Pokedex completion it's still yeah. cool yeah, it it's cool. it's really cool because in, in in Sun and Moon now you don't necessarily have to wait around for someone to trade them to you. You can just throw your Pokemon out into the cloud and then come back onto the, uh, onto the online plaza 
and then you'll once you log in and log on to the Wi-Fi, you automatically get a notification that says, yeah. "Well, it's being traded." So yeah. you, can, you can go about your day and go about your your Pokemon journey, and then come back and be like, "I did it." <laughs> that voice. Mm-hmm. And actually, I'm gonna do a I quick. Ad, I'm gonna do a quick ad for Wi-Fi. Um, can't stand having to be plugged in to use the internet. Want to feel like the internet's around you all the time. Want to breathe, eat, and sleep the internet. Oh my God. Wi-Fi. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god! I don't like that. That was. I think that was a lot creepier than you intended. No, it's just as creepy <laughs> as I intended. Okay. Yeah. So, I think the last big thing we should definitely talk about. Uh, we talked about the anime. We talked about the main games. I have a lot of fond memories of the spinoff games that came up came out with. I okay. Um, I want to talk about the spinoff games. So there's one thing I want to bring up that I just want to know if you guys have noticed in the recent regular games. What? Which is that. So we talked kind of at the beginning of the episode a little bit about the Michael Vick aspect of Pokemon training, which is that you are just, you know, cockfighting, dogfighting these these animals with each other. Mm -hmm. Have you guys noticed that the game makers themselves seem to have like a mildly guilty conscience about this? And in every single game now, you have like one friend who's like, ooh, I do not like to fight Pokemon. I do not like to see them hurt each other. Wasn't that the plot (laughs) of Black and White? Oh my god, yeah. The enemy team's yeah. facade was saying they wanted to be, be Pokemon peace activists. Right, yeah. but then they're still doing all this. Yeah, they were hypocrites. But now you've got a friend who's like, I, and it's they're also like towing this line where they also don't want to make the player feel bad. So they're yeah. like, I will not fight Pokemon. I love my Pokemon too much. But I see how much you love yours and how yeah. well you guys treat each other. So <laughs> you guys are really okay to I think fight. The idea is that the Pokemon themselves genuinely love battle, which is real sick, but you feel a little yeah. bit less guilty for them. I, I, you know, I don't, uh, I don't agree with your choice of uh, putting your dog up to shooting lasers from its mouth, but it looks really fun. I don't it agree. Really with pretty. It. Do it again, hey friend. You know, I, I know that, I know that pitting living things against each other for our amusement is wrong, but you two really seem to love each other. So go ahead, murder each other. Like your house is burned down, and be like, I got a badge. Good. <laughs> Man, I feel like I've seen so many joke posts about Ash and Pikachu being like the been some of the best a pair of the best lovers in anime. Yeah, oh, oh, bucket of yuck. <laughs> they only we only really realized. Um, I looked it up. They only straight up confirmed that Pikachu's a guy in recent years. Oh, I guess I've never really thought about because well, Pikachu girls have the heart tail. Apparently, there was an episode where to help him fit into a beauty pageant, they faked the heart tail because oh. for years it's just been androgynous. Like it's Pikachu, Pikachu, Pikachu. They don't say he, they say it, but they're like maybe they they don't know because it's, it's it has think, a girly voice. In the in the anime, yeah, I think they I think they've classed Pikachu as a he at this point. No, that's what I'm saying. There was I was telling there was an episode I looked it up. Um, oh, oh, okay. Because they they classified since you know that retcon female Pikachus have heart ends instead of yeah. the lightning tail to fake P- putting Pikachu into a beauty pageant. They get they taped a heart tail on. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But um. Just be able to talk about spin-off okay. games. Okay. Chris, do you have fond memories of Pokemon Snap? You ever play that? Uh, uh, oh, my God. Oh. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> I just actually went to like do a really have... dark place, just like, oh, Pokemon Snap. <laughs> I, I can't even... I, did, I, did I hit a nerve? <laughs> you did. <laughs> um, I, all right, I have an inter- uh, I, I hope it's interesting. I have a story to tell about Pokemon Snap because... Uh, again, this is at the time when I was all about Pokemon, and Pokemon Snap did the did this weird collaboration with Blockbuster. Yes, where, yes, yeah, I don't where, print, you, you, where you they print out like stickers or something. You would take um, a cartridge to the station, and it would print photos, stickers of your photo album. Yeah. Now Nintendo had this contest where if you got the highest amount of points, I don't think they told you. How many points? I think it's like 10,000 or something. But if you got the highest maximum amount of points you could get in Pokemon Snap, then you would win a trip to Australia. Uh, and that kind of blew my mind. So I did it. I And the the thing, that, uh, the, po- the actual Pokemon that gets you the most points is Mew. Yeah. And you have to take a picture of Mew in a very, very particular pose. In position. And it only does it for like one frame. No, this happens. Uh, my, my friend Colin is here. And he's shaking his head. All you gotta do is just keep chucking balls until the shield breaks. Well, yeah. Uh, sorry. Oh, yeah. You, that's when you're like flying on the weird the rainbow, like, rainbow road yeah, at the yeah, last unlockable you level. You gotta keep you gotta keep throwing balls on it until its shield breaks. But you only you have to get close enough to get them to take the picture at the right moment to get it perfect. Yeah. And it, 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 it was hard for me. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I wound up doing it. Nice. And I sent my points to Nintendo. Mm-hmm. And Nintendo said, congratulations, you are one of the top three finalists or five finalists. I was among the group of people who got 
Yeah. So they sent me a letter that says, now you have to write a letter saying how much you love Pokemon. And hopefully, uh, once we break down uh, which has the uh, which of you has the best essays, we'll send you to Australia. And I'm as high as a kite at that point. I am. Uh, <laughs> I believed in my writing abilities and I was going to do this. Got in the bag. Yeah. So, I, But then I read the fine print. If you live in one of these particular states, you cannot get the trip you cannot uh, win a trip to australia mm. and when you know it i lived in maryland and maryland was among the states that would not allow those kinds of trips that uh away across country devastating and it was and i sent a letter to nintendo i was like hey nintendo um <laughs> a little help uh, they're, like, they're like yeah no Sorry, we can't do anything about that thanks for playing pokemon Oh, buy our games, Chris. Man, yeah. I'm, I want to give you a hug right now. I, I, oh man, I give you a hug right now. We did hit a nerve. <laughs> oh, I, do, I feel so bad. I was just about to talk about how much I love this game, and that's, now I, and now <laughs> we still I, can. And, and, well, I feel bad now. Oh man, that's I, devastating. I, I, that was a very I, entertaining story, though. Last. Yeah, <laughs> but um, I actually do you remember when I won a surfing Pikachu from Nintendo Power? I thought we got surfing Pikachu when we went to like the mall. No, that was to get Mew. That's right. There was a big mall event near us back when we were kids. I oh. remember my mom took us, and not only did they have, like, big screen, you know, Game Boy playing, I remember a bunch of cosplayers walked by, like, people our <laughs> age, dressed as Bash and Team Rocket and stuff, and my mom looked so horrified. Like, what have I gotten myself into? Oh, I gotta give that woman all the points, though, because she, she came with us to those movies. Yeah, she put up with it. And she embraced our Pokemon card, f- f- like, fanaticism. To be clear, she hated it. But oh, yeah. hated it. She knew it was making us happy. So. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, but, Serena, my wife Serena went through the same thing where her, her parents took her to go see the Pokemon movies and uh, she had to apologize yeah, when funny. she I remember da- I think our dad took us to see the first one and he was more indifferent about the whole thing Yeah, uh, mom I think she saw two with you and I saw it on my own she actually I think she said she actually it was better than she thought it would be three I remember we saw it with her she walked out during the Pichu short yeah. and let me say right now I never liked the Pikachu shorts Oof. those are like a Pokemon cartoon for Nick Jr. yeah I actually like those. They're and, I, and I'm not saying that they're not uh, for kid for little little kids. Well, they are definitely for little kids. The animation's uh, good, but but the animation is what got me, and I, I definitely love that kind of that style of animation. That they're yeah, really, really no, it's just the fact that there's no dialogue except from when Meowth pops yeah. up. Yeah, mm-hmm. can deal with that. But we, so I think okay, so uh, but I guess so I guess we do have memories of Pokemon Snap. Not um, all. The other one no. I remember sinking tons of time into. Patrick said he wasn't big on it. Was Pokemon Pinball? The first one. I remember that. Very addicting for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I need to play Ruby and Sapphire one. I have it, but never really got to it. Yeah, I just kind of, I, I it, it had that thing, which was it, it, the one thing that it required to hook me even a little bit, which was that it just had a Pokemon face on it. So I did, of course, like play around with it a little bit. But at a certain point, I was like, this is more pinball than it is Pokemon. And yeah. I'm kind of <laughs> You still, still got to catch them all. Gotta catch them all, which which I think was the only thing that kept me is that is that I was like, oh, I am collecting Pokemon. You built a Pokedex and swapped stages and stuff, right? Which, cool. which is like, which is like, you know, in the same way where like, and I guess we'll talk about Pokemon Go, I'm sure, in a little bit. Yeah. But it's like the gotcha. same way Pokemon Go kind of got me. Yeah, um, I, I I think besides Snap, um, uh, and b- besides the whole uh, kerfuffle that happened with Snap, that was actually my only spinoff game for Pokemon. Uh, up, really? up until up and well, I mean, I had some really bad feelings about it, so uh, <laughs> oh. you felt a little burned. I'm sorry yeah. for bringing it up. God, I gotta stop. I felt, certain, I, I felt a certain way about it, but uh, obviously, Pokemon Go came out, and I, I managed to drop some money on that. But the one spinoff that I actually that I really really enjoyed, and I guess you can call it a spinoff, but it it's it's not, but it's more of like an event. Um, the Pokemon concert what was it called uh symphony symphonic uh, evolutions symphonic, yeah. symphonic evolutions is amazing me and my wife been. me and serena went to go see that it was great oh i'll have to go if they have it again you, you haven't gone have you i have not gone he's heard of it though yeah i, I sent him stuff by that a year ago they had one at wolf trap and yeah i went to a I'll, zelda one at wolf trap yeah for time. john's birthday one year i think we got him tickets to the to, zelda like, one at wolf trap and it was Actually, no, it wasn't just Zelda. No, it was video game. Video game music. You went, my mom, our mom went, and she loved it. They yeah, like, it was actually amazing. Was playing like Chrono Trigger and stuff. That was the one that blew her away because Chrono Trigger yeah. is one of the best soundtracks. In the game. Yeah. If they, oh, yeah. Uh, if, you, if you guys hear word of uh, um, Symphonic Evolutions happening happening again in our area, dude, I would like to like I would like for us to get together and go yeah. do 
do that thing. I bet awesome. that. Um, I'm waiting to see if we get word on the the Kingdom Hearts Orchestra coming to Wolfrap oh. or, or anything. Um, oh. Chris, I know we've talked about it. Patrick's a big fan of the series too. Um, yeah. I am a big fan of the series, but, but I, I was going to say uh, back to Pokemon for a second. One uh, uh, spinoff that I thought was was I I didn't play a lot of the later versions of it. Um, I don't really even know how many there there were. Um, but uh, Pokemon, um, oh my god, what's the? It was the N sixty four game, Stadium. Pokemon Stadium. Stadium yeah, we had those. Was to me at that time like revolutionary. Yeah, because mm-hmm. at that point I had spent enough time playing Pokemon on my handheld device that it it blew my mind to be able to control them in like a three D world and to see them see like, them fully animated. So to see them fully animated, like all the moves, and in like a in like a stadium, I I, on I your did, TV I, on my TV, it, it felt. It felt like something that was like you know the size of my you know pinky finger my entire life had just like exploded in size, yeah. and I also loved all those dumb little mini games. That's what me and Patrick yeah. were always thinking because we, we we remember we we got Pokemon Coliseum and we're underwhelmed by it. Yeah, and we were like yeah. need the mini games, need the Magikarp game, the Look at Sun Sushi game. But um, it's funny, a game like Stadium wouldn't fly in today's world because the games kind of look like it now. Yeah, and uh, in terms of the but battles and such, better. like kids yeah. they have the kids have no they. I sound like an old geezer. Kids who play Pokemon Day have no idea how good they have it with presentation. <laughs> Absolutely. They didn't animate until like certain versions like Crystal and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't think they became a regular thing until Diamond and Pearl. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, that was my I, – I, I couldn't say more nice things about how much I loved that game. I think I did spend uh, a good um, a good dose of my summer vacation with Pokemon Stadium. Yeah. I, I, all right. I'm going to let you finish your story, Patrick, because I think I have – I th- I think I have one more story concerning. Yeah, and we still yeah. got to talk about Pokemon Go. Robert. Yeah, yeah. I actually uh, no, you actually go ahead. I, I don't think I have much more to say about Pokemon Stadium. Other, okay. Other than the fact that uh, there there is a certain point, I still believe there is a Scyther wood chopping game. There is that yes. that was the bane of my existence because I oh, I I got to a certain point where I was phenomenal at. Every mini game in that game, that except that? for that Scyther woodcutting thing, and it was just at a certain point it would get so the the, the target area would get so small and it Super would get size. so fast <laughs> that it seems like I could try it a thousand times and I never got good at the that one game. I sucked at was that Clefairy Simon Says game. Oh, I that, was, that. that was that was good for me. Ugh. Oh man, where were you guys? <laughs> we Chris, what was your story? Awesome time. <laughs> All right. Um, I had Stadium for a little bit, and um, every so often I ask my younger brother Tyrone to come over, and, and as kids we would we would play Stadium most of the night. Mm-hmm. Um, but it got to the point where I got really obsessive with Stadium. I really wanted that surfing Pikachu. Like, oh, didn't we and, all? And during the more challenging cups, oh my god! Like they, it became, they got tough. No yeah. kidding. I never fully beat either of them. Yeah, it, it got quite good. It got really, really like mind-numbingly challenging. Um, so I managed to do it. I managed to get my surfing Pikachu, uh, or some, uh, or some prized equivalent. I, I forget which, I think when they gave you one of the starters or something. Um, I but at one, some, at one point they gave you far fetched and I'm like, why? Yeah. Yeah. At, at some point, um, me and my brother, we were playing this game for about five days straight Ooh. or so we thought. So it was <laughs> Thursday. Yeah. It was Thursday when we finished up and, um, I want I want to make sure I got this right. We finished up on Thursday, what we thought was Thursday, and then we looked at the calendar, and we're like, ah, so we got one more day left in a week. And then our parents came came along, and we're like, okay, it's time for Tyrone to go. And we're like, what? What? But it's only Thursday. And then we kept looking at the calendar, and it was like, no, we skipped a day. How did we skip one wow. day? We so skipped. What made you lose track of time? We skipped an entire day. I don't even know how it happened. So what you're saying to us now is not only – did you lose track of time? You lost an entire day of your life to this yes, game. I lost an entire day. I don't, I don't know what happened to it. I think what happened. I think what Timer. happened is that we fought Mewtwo in real life, and he said, "I am sorry for my transgressions." Wipe and he memory, wiped sure. our memories, and then he flew away into the horizon, never to be seen again until some shady other movie. Quick, quick interjection. That always pissed me off at the end of the first movie that he erased their memories when they did that shitty other movie where they meet him. <laughs> At the end, he's about to erase their memories again. They all point out why. No, we want to remember this. He's like, "All right, cool, like, yeah, 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 yeah." It's worth that whole movie's worth it just for them calling him out on that. Yeah, why didn't you? Why didn't you do that to us, Mewtwo? How come you just couldn't leave us alone? We we <laughs> liked you. 
Yeah. So that is a pretty that is a crazy story. Uh, and last quick thing I'll say, uh, I've only played the first one because like, there were three the Pokemon Ranger DS games I thought were pretty neat. Those cool. were like still sprite art, but it was about you drawing like circles on the screen to capture them. Mm-hmm. Neat. But uh, let's this. I think the one that most has on the most people's minds this year is Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go. You were hyped for this game. Well, I uh, I was so, too, but you. So I went through a lot with this game before it came out, and I was I was I was initially uh, very angry at the Niantic company. Um, mm. So Niantic, I, I know a lot of people listening will probably know this game. Uh, came out with a game called Ingress a few years back, which is, you know, an Android, uh, was originally just an Android game where you would go around the city or wherever you lived and you'd collect these, you, you'd like hack these focus points and you would steal them for your team. It was kind of geocaching. Kind it was of kind of, it was geocaching in the sense that you used like GPS to go to a real life location. Yeah, real locations. But you were like, Doing hacking and earning items to help you hack and raise your level. When you had a higher level, you could get better items, better hacking, better, et cetera, et cetera. And so you were fighting to control the earth. And I wanted to play this game forever. I was, I want, I was like, oh, I live in New York. I can go to all these cool spots and just walk around and play this game. And maybe I'll actually exercise for once in my life. Um, <laughs> but it wasn't coming out for iOS, uh, which was devastating for me. And then finally. Finally, finally, it comes out for iOS. And I get it, and I'm thrilled. And for three straight days, I just, like, walk around playing this game. I think I walked, like, 15 miles a day. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it was great, but the problem was my phone would die so quickly into all these games. So I was carrying around two battery packs with me every day. That's dedication. And at a certain point, it became such a hassle, I couldn't play the games anymore. Oh. Fast forward to a year later, Pokemon Go is like the first inklings are starting to be talked about. And I am so psyched. And I'm, I've got, a, I've got Google uh, like updates like sending me e- like Google alerts for like Pokemon Go yeah, set up yeah. so I could know if like a beta test was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. We'll and that. And I was so pumped because they finally announced, like, we're accepting applications for beta testing, like, a few months early. And all they want to know is your email, where you are, and if you played Ingress <laughs> and what your level in Ingress was. And my, oh, my no. level was high. It was good. And I had played that game. And I was like, I'm, I'm it. I'm going to get to play early. I'm going to get to play. <laughs> you don't need any more beta testers. I am your man. I'm your guy. I live in a major <laughs> metropolitan area. Like, I'm your guy. And I'm sure you can still name all 151 of the originals. And I can name all 151 of the originals. That's what you started with. <laughs> uh, don't challenge me to do the poker rap, because I think I can only do, like, the first little bit. But Yeah, well, I love um, that. I uh, submit, and lo and behold, like, six waves of beta test applications go out. And I do not get picked. Oh. And this leads me to do something that I'm kind of ashamed of because I've never done it before in my entire life. And it was, I wrote a very angry letter to a video game developer. Oh my God. <laughs> that was like, who is more qualified than I? It was the ugliest, like dumbest, Uh-oh. most petulant, childish thing I've ever sent. <laughs> and immediately, it was like one of those things where immediately after you press the send button, you're like, no, oh, that was dumb. Oh, no. Did they respond? Okay. Uh, they responded like six days later with like no- nothing more than Niantic loves to hear from you about all issues you're having with the game. We respect any and all opinions and can't wait for you to have the Pokemon experience you've been okay, waiting for. They didn't for. read it. So they clearly didn't like, even read it. It was the worst thing ever. And I've never felt like a dumb little kid more. And then, of course, the game came out. The game came out and it's just a Pokemon version of Ingress. Not to say that it isn't good, but oh. I... Uh, that's a very long way to say I'm a petulant child. And, and oh totally my god, uh, that that actually, that actually sounds amazing. And honestly, if <laughs> I, I like this is his closest equivalent to your um, Pokemon Snap story. <laughs> yeah, except uh, if if I was a pettier child than I am now, I definitely would have written that letter because I oh, feel yeah. like I would have written that letter now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there probably were kids that, who did the same thing Patrick did, like who weren't as qualified, but they love them some Pokemon. I would. I, uh, if I was in your shoes, dude, you did the right thing. Because I would turn on some one winged angel and started typing away and be like, They're this. They're, "No, my rage in word form." But uh, Pokemon Go's fun. Oh yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, really good. And uh, yeah, I just got an email from them, so I'm going to give a, a quick advertisement. Hey, nerds. What's it like sitting on your couch all day? Is it dope? Are you having a good time? Not seeing the sun? Not ever having to wear sunscreen? Well, slap on the SPF 60 and get outside. Pokemon. Go. <laughs> this is going to be a episode to listen back to. That was beautiful. I like that. I've been practicing for a week. So, have you, are you guys still um, playing Pokemon Go to any degree? They finally started adding some new Pokemon to it. I feel like I've really monopolized the time, but I'll just jump back in and say really quick that I am having, I really, you know, I enjoyed it in terms of the fact that I'm always walking around the city. Yeah. And it's, it's nice for that. But at the end of the day, it's just like Ingress where like, I can't carry around all these rechargeable packs with me all the time. I'm a, I'm a goddamn adult now and Mm -hmm. I, I need my phone to work. So, uh, the battery life problem is so bad that a game that I, you know, I get, I get all its flaws. I get its repetition. I get that it's not real battling. I have lots of problems with it, but that I thought was fun. I love the because you're catching Pokemon in the real world. But man, it kills the battery so bad. It that does. I, I couldn't really stick with it. Yeah. Um, and Chris, I think uh, Patrick has been the dominant talker over the past few minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna take a break. Yeah. What do you want to say about Pokemon Go, if anything? No, it, it, it's cold as shit outside, so I'm not gonna pick it back up until like April. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I love points. Pokemon. Don't don't get me wrong, and I I I like the I like the concept of Pokemon Go too. And you can bet that when that game came out, uh, I was walking all over the place. And um, Nintendo and Niantic, or Niantic, uh, they were smart in releasing it during the summer months. But it's cold outside now. It snowed earlier today. It did. I, yeah, it really shit. did. First snow of the season, at least yeah. in the Maryland DC area. I'm uh, I'm gonna wait. I know there's new Pokemon out there, but unfortunately, um, like I can't even I can't even walk around to my job with my yeah. phone. And all uh, the new ones are from eggs because they're starting with the pre-evolutions, I believe, and stuff like Togepi. Oh, yeah, that's that's cool. Um, I can't, uh, but I'm 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 not able to go on my lunch break with my phone, so that yeah. definitely slashes slashes the possibility of that in ha- in half. And I got freelance stuff to do when I get home too, so that yeah. that kind of chops my time down in half, and it it does make me sad. Yeah, so. I still uh, I've been doing a bit more of it lately, both because I I haven't gotten any new Pokemon from eggs lately, but uh, because I, my my new place is near a lot of shops and the like, I like to pull it up for a few minutes just to get the kilometers and the daily bonuses from catching and going to Pokestops and stuff. And uh, my I know people are generally unhappy with how battling works and how there's no trading. Uh, I would like more trading in some way soon because there's still some Pokemon I just can't find. But uh, my most wanted edition is more Pokemon. Period. Like, yeah. just more catchable ones to always entice to you. Like, oh, I haven't seen that one yet. Don't have that I'm, one yet. I'm glad that they started fixing, um, that they've done a better job at um, uh, at taking care of all those bugs. Because I started catching some higher level schmucks, like, in my early playthroughs. Mm-hmm. And then the game froze, and I had to open up a new yeah. account. Oh, the, op- the first weeks or two was a technical disaster. I, yeah. I ran into a... Uh, Dragonite on like my third day uh, oh my and God. I was thrilled and it did that thing I don't know if you remember the early bug where you toss it it would catch it and then the ball would just sit there without yes. shaking that's what happened Game to me that just happened to me in that Dragonite I had to restart it and uh, I've not seen one since I hadn't had the pleasure Shit. of actually meeting Dragon Jesus uh, quite yet I just <laughs> met I just met Venomoth and I was like I'm gonna get this crappy looking Venomoth and the Pokeball like, no you won't and he looked at me for like 15 minutes, and I was like, God damn it. All right, fine. <laughs> I have him, but I'm not going to give it to you. Yeah. I, I have him now. That, that was like on my first yeah, playthrough. Yeah. I only caught like three, and he was like my third one, and then the game froze. And I was like, well, that's my life. Yeah, I can't remember if there were any that, that happened to me with that I haven't caught since. But uh, there have only been some, like uh, when I visited Patrick in New York, There, you know, there's some I saw there that I haven't seen since. Mm-hmm. Um, I, th- I think I saw the only Hitman uh, Chan I've ever seen there. I still have him, but I haven't found any others. Uh, maybe if they add Ty Rogue, that'll make it easier. Yeah, uh, I wonder how that. I wonder how that stuff will work for. Uh, well, actually, probably you can evolve Gengar and stuff normally, so, so probably just Poke Candies and stuff. But um, I think now's probably a pretty good time to start wrapping things up. Okay, uh, I think this is a good shot at being our longest episode ever. To be honest, <laughs> we'll, yeah, uh, it we'll is. see. An hour and a half. It's close, and uh, but I think we can all agree that Pokemon is pretty cool. Pokemon's pretty cool. Pokemon is pretty damn cool. So really quick, I'm just going to do a quick ad for the show. And uh, sketch, grab your pencil, watch, look at the TV, play, play, <laughs> sketch, watch, play. 
Chris had a really inquisitive expression for those first two parts. He was like, he was like analyzing your uh, speech patterns. I was like, it's all right. <laughs> Patrick does have Patrick is the uh, actor of us three, so it makes sense that he would have an announcing, an interesting nice. announcing. Do you guys have a plug section? Yes, I was about to say. Where can people find you online? Uh, I'm on Twitter at Flurry P. Uh, and if you're ever in New York, look up the sketch. Uh, the, the sorry, not sketch. The improv team. Are we going to make out? We're doing shows all over New York all the time, and we'd love to see anybody there. That is a great name. Cool. Thank you. And uh, I'll get to our next episodes of Picking the Deck. But Chris, where can we find you? Um, you can find me on uh, Twitter at Sparkflow Films. Um, you can just. Find me there, and I'm usually just lurking at other people's artwork, and hopefully I'm going to start dropping some new information about my film that I'm animating sometime Sweet. soon. I did yeah. see that preview uh, storyboard pic you put on Facebook. I'm excited to see more. Mm-hmm. Uh, myself, you can find the show at, Ske- at Sketch Watch Play. Uh, it has links to both me at my, uh, my and Chris's Twitter handles. Mine is Behonkus on just about everything. Twitter, Tumblr, DeviantArt, uh, not Facebook, but... Uh, Oh, that's 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 where it's easy to find a lot. Oh, YouTube as well. And a um, little thing, I uh, Patrick, you already know this, and Chris, I mentioned it to you. We uh, I stopped at Staples today and printed out a bunch of business cards for the show with yeah. handles and links to where we can be found. Um, the next episode will be recorded after, well, probably after I attend a little thing called Magfest at National Harbor, Maryland. It's a mm-hmm. Very fun gaming convention that I've has become a yearly tradition for me. Chris, you said you might be there, but uh, mm-hmm. either way, I'm going to be leaving these cards around and handing them to anybody interesting. So uh, I I kind of wonder if this will be a lot of people's first episode. Now I'm I'm wondering if you meant to say hand the cards to anyone interesting or anyone interested because <laughs> I'm, I'm going to hand it to hot looking people. Yeah, really hot or like or like really just good cosplay. Really, yeah. you have to. It, it doesn't doesn't matter who you are or or, like, or what you're doing. But if the cosplay is good, you'll get a business card. I won't even ask if you're actually into these things or cosplaying professionally. Like, hey, right. here you'll like this. Um, but I will say, uh, I talked about this with Chris a bit. Chris, is there something you want to say? Yeah, um, I wanted to ask. Um, I mean, we spent a lot of this episode like chatting about our fondest memories and some disastrous memories about the Pokemon franchise. Uh, I was wondering, like, if you guys want to like hit us up on Twitter. Or, uh, or even in the comment section, uh, um, if there is a comment section, uh, like just tell bloggers. us your yeah, uh, yeah, tell us and tell us your fondest memories of Pokemon. Yeah, and like you know, blogspot.com. Yeah, just let us know what your thoughts are. Yeah, and you just reminded me right before I finish, right before we finish with the next pick. Uh, what are some of your personal favorite Pokemon? If you can think of any. My personal favorite Pokemon. Let me look at my wedding ring because um, my wife actually engraved my six favorite Pokemon on there. That's amazing. There. Yep. What the hell uh, did you just say uh, to me? Just say that again. Patrick can't believe it. Uh, my wife engraved my six favorite Pokemon onto my Pokemon, uh, onto my mar- uh, my marriage ring. My God wedding ring. damn, that's awesome. Yep. And uh, Charmander and Charizard are there. Okay. Uh, there's Mudkip, uh, <laughs> Baneri. Uh, Baneri, you said? Yeah, Baneri. Okay, but no, no, I'm sorry, not 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 Baneri. Um, uh, Bunnelby. Oh, that's uh, another Bunnelby. Good Pokemon. one. Yeah. Yeah. The other two. Um, Froakie. Yeah, yeah, I like Froakie. Love that. And um, uh, let's see, the one who uh drops his pants and then pulls it back up. He's a dark fighting type. Scraggy. Uh, Scraggy. Yeah. Scraggly. Yeah. yeah. Final thing. Okay, Patrick. Name a few favorites. Um, you know, I've always got to give a real shout out to uh Squirtle. Uh, he's going to have a real great place in my heart. It's my first ever starter, my first ever Pokemon. And uh, just from the anime, I got to tell you, I love I, I love Jigglypuff. Love her. <laughs> Poor Jigglypuff. No one ever listened to her songs. No. And I and want to next- say, uh, Patrick, I remember... John, what- do you have a favorite Pokemon? I do, but I just want to just relate to what you just said. Uh, I got you as a gift at Magfest uh, a couple years ago a Ninja Turtles, a Ninja Squirtle shirt, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Squirtle shirt. Yeah, awesome! It's I, I exactly what you think it is. Yep. It's cool. I think I and, saw um, that. That's cool. And related to one of Chris's favorites, Patrick, for close to twenty years now, you sometimes randomly go to me, Charmander, Char. Oh yeah, uh, I do. Uh, uh, I I there's an episode of Pokemon where all the Pokemon are on an abandoned island of the giant island. Pokemon. It's a yeah. great one. Yeah, it's a great episode. And it's all subtitled except for Meow. So Charmander says that's really awful, but it's Charmander Char. <laughs> yep. Um, my favorite to the record for nostalgia's sake, Bulbasaur, my first starter. For humor's Aww. sake, I think Wobbuffet is hilarious. I've never used it in the games, but it's such a goofball, stupid looking like- thing. I like Wobbuffet, and I'm glad that they kept them on anime, too. Yeah, yeah, he's still around. And uh, the ones that I think are just awesome-looking and I love to use in the games, uh, Gengar and Scizor. Nice. 
Scizor is badass looking, and I'm glad that they were both in Pokken Tournament and both got uh, Mega Evolutions. But uh, now that we are officially wrapped up, Chris, I think we discussed it before. Uh, I will pick our next proper episode. We'll be going back yes. to our regular swapping back and forth. And mm-hmm. we are going to do a general retrospective, much like this, but solely about a certain game series that I think you're also familiar with, Patrick. Uh, a little thing called Rayman. Never heard of it. Liar. Oh, man. Liar. <laughs> Well, guys, I just want to thank you so much for having me on. Love the show. Looking forward to hearing the episode. And looking forward to maybe coming back someday. You guys are awesome. We would love for it. Keep doing Uh, it. Yeah. That's good meeting you, Patrick. This has been been your first encounter with Patrick. And uh, Mm -hmm. hopefully it won't be the last because I would love to have him back on. Maybe even over Skype if you get a good mic and, and, like, computer for it yeah and who knows awesome. like, I, I could also die it's it's hard to say what well happen, i wasn't going in that direction i don't know who knows what the future holds <laughs> yeah my, my, but, um, just at, my yeah, wife just so, looked at you from across the room like what yeah oh, <laughs> by the time this goes up we're gonna be in our, our new year already so happy new year to everybody and uh thank we look god forward- this year's over yeah i hear i've heard that sentiment quite a bit and uh, i can see why looking forward to another year of podcasts uh i'm john this is chris I'm, this is I'm patrick chris. hi uh, I was very rude of me to just say, say your sign off. Let's try that again. Uh, me, the, me, Chris Patrick. I'm John. I'm Chris. And I'm special guest Patrick. Our special announcer. And we wish you a good day. <laughs> <laughs>